What's up, guys? Dave Van Auken here, Felicia Spencer. Just two Floridians traveling the world, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Canada. Man, but we're kind of back. We're, we're back in our home environment. T, how are you doing? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's nice to be home for sure. Um, yeah, just got back a, a matter of hours ago and just kind of recovering. <laughs> I love how that. about yourself? <laughs> Uh, same. It's uh, it's it's um, the time difference definitely gets to you a little bit for sure. I was out there in Albuquerque for three days, um, just spending some good time at Jackson Wink doing that was very cool, unique uh, little tour I got in the bare knuckle show. But uh, how was yours? I, I love seeing the pictures from afar. And um, one of our friends, um, Andy Wynn was out there and she was showing stuff. And she was like, I'm so happy to be here with Felicia. I was like, that's awesome. So like, how did that go? It was awesome. The Palace Athena show, like the whole promotion is just very like, it's refreshing. It's fun. I mean, obviously it's nice that they want me to be a part of it in, in such a, you know, big way, like commentating and getting to do the in cage interviews and stuff like that. So uh, it's definitely been a fun weekend. I got to bring, I brought my, my mom along with me for the ride and nice. we got to spend some time together and she got to see the life, I guess, a little bit with, from that side of the cage and uh yeah yeah it was a great show um i'm excited for their next event announcement i don't know when they're gonna like officially announce it but i know it'll be exciting for us um yeah <laughs> so um intent <laughs> okay. um somewhere maybe in the in the state uh would be cool so i'm That's pushing awesome. for it <laughs> awesome dude count me in you gotta you gotta use your ties there and you have yeah. to say, hey, Fight Bananas needs our own corner. Dave, he's like the greatest guy ever. Like, we got to make this yeah. happen. So, yeah, well, I think a big muscle. thing will be um, to really rally all of the, the local girls to apply on their website, amateur or pro, you know, and just ask to be on their event. You know, they're not like exclusive. So if you're if you're able to do it, if you're fighting for someone else and you can come do a fight, um, I think – it would be really important to have local people to, yeah. you know, pull together an event. And yeah. um, I think they're very, very close to coming to Florida. So Dude, that's awesome. let's make it happen. <laughs> I love that. That's cool. That's very cool news. Um, yeah, it was, it was cool. Like I said, it just, I was following you through socials and um, also just, it was funny to see you and Cyborg together. I don't know. It's just something about it. It's yeah. just very, you guys will probably like always be linked through history, you know, just always with um, how incredible that fight was. And uh, just seeing, you can tell when you see the other fighters and like how they smile and how they much like, uh, it was cool that they were with you and they met you and that kind of thing. That's always like, uh, it's awesome to see for sure. Yeah, I sat I sat at a table, well, with my mom too, with, with Cyborg and Sarah Kaufman after the event. And we yeah. just like, we just ran into each other and hung out for an hour having a drink well i don't think cyborg was having a drink she's training for a fight but right yeah, boxing <laughs> for her boxing like, debut so i had a drink <laughs> um yeah so it was, it was really fun you know it's um all good vibes so awesome did, uh, behind the scenes did it one time did your mom like give you a elbow be like is that the is that the woman did is that the one that kind of you and her got into it? Did she, yeah. did she pull a long card out? <laughs> they, got, they got a photo. Uh, yeah. So I think we're cycling through like everyone in my family getting a photo at some point in their life with her. <laughs> so. yeah. There you go. Very cool. It's good time. Awesome. Very cool. Um, all right. Let's get into it. While we're here, uh, of course, your lock pick and your phenomenal pick. Uh, UFC was off last weekend and you were doing your thing and I was doing my thing. And then the last time it was funny, we kind of, I, I don't know what, what happened. I think it was my camera. Your camera. Something happened. I remember. And I remember you had, you picked Usman, of course, like we all had Usman. Yeah. And I told the story like nine times. I don't want to tell it at 10. Long story short, I fell asleep. I did the UFC fight pass show the night before. And I had to drive through the night. One of our girls weren't feeling good. So just time and parties and stuff. So I yeah, drive through happened. the night. I fell asleep and missed it. Uh, of course, I saw everything afterwards and all the yeah. uh, commotion afterwards. But it was just crazy what the what leon edwards did and to capture that victory just a massive moment massive yeah i mean i'm super happy for him to have you know accomplished that and it's no secret that i didn't watch it live either <laughs> i mean like pay-per-views are rough you know, I know, I know. <laughs> um 
but yeah, so I saw the the highlights in the morning. I mean, first thing in the morning I do, of course, is like, boom, straight to it. And it's like, oh my God, like, that was really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I still think I, you know, in hindsight, like I, I really thought Usman was going to win, but I was yeah, yeah, super yeah, happy yeah. for Leon. And yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's why the fight game is so exciting and why yeah. the bets, that's why people bet on underdogs, you know, because yeah. it really is lucrative when it, when it works. And it's crazy. He wasn't even like that heavy of an underdog. He wasn't even the biggest underdog on the card. You know? No, he wasn't. And, and that's, it should have been almost maybe telling that, you know, usually some of these guys like an Izzy and of course Usman, a couple fights against, I think even the second one against Masvidal and like what Valentina Shoshenko becomes like, they be, and Kayla Harrison, of course, like they become these huge, massive underdogs. Because we all know, like, you know, when you're on the top of the MMA and of course upsets happen, I was with Holly Holm and Albuquerque and I had to, right? Like I not even fanboy. Out. I had to talk to her about Rousey. I just like, it's like, I have like eight minutes with her. Here's a minute. I'm giving it like, you could tell me. <laughs> through. And upsets will always happen in mixed martial arts, but it is wild when the fighters, are, when they're on top of the, like the food chain, where they're, they're at their best, they go on these runs. Like we've seen, Anderson Silva go on a run, and of course GSP go on multiple runs, and what Amanda has done, Valentina, and just wrote and just uh, it's it's wild what the run that Usman was on, literally a ten year run undefeated, he, beating the best fighters in the world, looking unstoppable. But yeah, he wasn't a huge favorite. He was big, but wasn't as big as I thought. So um, that yeah. was telling. But UFC Paris, uh, talk about a big favorite. How about Sierra gone? He's a huge favorite this weekend. Uh, yeah. I like him a lot as well. So that's the main event. I'm kind of like spoiler alert right off the bat, but he is the biggest favorite on the card. It's wild because Tai Tu Voss is on a roll and it's a heavyweight. Anything can happen, but Cyril Gunn is the biggest favorite. I like him, but let's go right there. What's what's your lock? Let's start with your lock pick of UFC Paris. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to pick Cyril Gunn, but, okay. yeah. but to be fair, like you said, I think the lines are off. I think Tai Tu Voss has a better chance than that as far. I mean, like, like, anyone has a chance and I know I'm sort of backtracking my pick, but Taitui Vasa shouldn't be that big of an underdog against Zero Gone, even though I think Zero Gone will win. Um, yeah. And, and for UFC to be in Paris, I just want to like make it know like that's super exciting. I think that's super cool. That would have been a fun one to, to be a part of. I don't know. Yeah. Something about Paris is like unknown in the fight world. I mean, they've been, there. have they been there once? No, they've never been their been first time. This yeah, is their first time. time. Yeah. So kind of like new territory. I think it's yeah. that's super cool that they're able to do a show there now. Yeah, and a big reason why is because Ciro gone, and that's kind of like his home turf, and he's a big deal. He's the number three heavyweight. He went to – and it's wild because he's got like this – I don't want to say negative connotation to him right now, but he lost to Francis Nagano in a five-round you know fight, and a lot of people in the judges' scorecards had that fight 2-2 going into the fifth. And it's like everyone's down on Sarah Gone, and he's been like unbeatable. He's like so good. He's it's wild to me. To me, he's a welterweight in a heavyweight body. He's just so smooth. He doesn't fight recklessly. He's very um, you know, technical and very, very cerebral, I think. Uh, just watching him yeah. fight. So, like to me, I it's one of those things, the same thing. And I you know, I said it and just my last one on it. I, I like Tai Tuavasa, he's so fun, he's great for the sport. I just think it's a really, really bad matchup. It's just like the opposite. Like Ty needs a Derek Lewis or last time before that was Greg Hardy like this brawl, let it go, emotionally just charge fight. It's and fun, yeah. the exact opposite. So I think yeah, he gets night. he's like the like the new breed of MMA fighter. Like he yeah. just seems so well rounded. He's got amazing wrestling. He's got great striking. Like, but I mean the wrestling in a heavyweight body is like it's a gold mine, right? <laughs> yes, it is. So, it is. Yeah, so that's my lock going okay. in. I totally agree with you on that. We're on the same page. So Sarah Gone is Felicia Spencer's lock for UFC Paris. How about your underdog? How about your Felicia Spencer feed nominal pick for UFC Paris? I think I maybe got it, but let's see. Let's see. What, what are you thinking? All right. Well, this one was kind of hard. I like a lot of the favorites on this card, honestly. Like I was kind of going through like, oh, yeah, favorite, favorite. Yeah, that makes sense. So – it's harder it is for me to pick this person as like an underdog. I like both people in this fight. So I was like, well, this is the underdog that I like the most okay. is Vittori versus Whitaker. Okay. Um, it's a tough one because I think they're like, I think it's pretty evenly matched. But as far as like picking one of the underdogs on the card, I like it, you know? Okay. So um, I think he has a 
a good shot. And uh, I think they're both, they're both like right there, you know, like number two, I don't even know who I would consider like second to Izzy um, and both, you know, both likable people. So, I mean, I think Bobby has kind of like the people's heart, you know, but yeah. Yeah. I think Vittori's a good guy too. I don't know. He's, he's trying. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, so before I kind of jump into Vittori and, and Whitaker and how important it is because Izzy's fighting Piera six weeks from now, eight weeks from now, and we don't know. Like, this can finally shake up the whole division because Whitaker and Vittori both lost to Izzy twice. Like, it seems like they both yeah. can't fight him. But if Alex wins in New York City six weeks from now, boom, now anything can happen. But before that, I saw uh, – I thought maybe Buckley. I, Buckley's an underdog. I thought maybe you go that way. And then I know your guy, Charles Jodane, he was closer. I know he's the favorite, but he was closer. The last two, three days, and I looked on my bookie, like he's becoming a bigger favorite. I saw him this morning at 145. Yeah. It was like 115 when I, like during the start of the week. So he's becoming a high favorite against Nathaniel Wood, which is, that's like the sleeper fight on this card. That is such a great fight. It's a Wood fun versus Jodane. Yeah, Jodane always has a fun fight. So yeah. it's a really good one. Yeah, and I, was, I saw his name and I was like, oh, I wonder, because he, Typically yeah. is, is an underdog, you know, right. but I think we're starting to get some respect on his name, you know, <laughs> people Dude. are trying to be like, okay, yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> he's Put good. Some respect on my name. I love that. Um, yeah. So Victoria, I, I'm a, a Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker guy. So I'm going to, yeah. I will disagree with you on this. Um, uh, yeah. Victoria can definitely do it. He has the skill set. you know, maybe it's more of a grapple and wrestle one type of fight. And that might go through Victoria's way. I like that as, as well, but I don't know. If Robert Whitaker's not fighting Israel Adesanya, I'm going with him. Uh, he's definitely been one of my favorites for uh, 10 years in the sport. So uh, I'm going to slide. I'm going to lean a favor. I'm gonna, I'm all chalk. I'm Cyril Gaon and Robert Whitaker in the two big yeah. fights. I'm chalk city. Yeah. Just picking favorites there, you know. Yeah. You know. Nothing uh, difficult. I'm on my high though. horse. <laughs> I'm on my high horse. So I, yeah. I'm on my high horse. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, awesome. But yeah, I, I would be happy for Bobby to win too, even if I took an L on that one. So either way, I'm happy. But yeah, and I don't know that it's kind of a tough one for them because I think they're just kind of, for me, I look at it as just like a fun fight that probably doesn't really mean that much. Like maybe like down the road, because if Alex beats Izzy, they're doing a rematch, right? So then it's like, if Alex beats Izzy twice, one of those guys might fight Alex, but are they going to wait that long, you know? So... It's it's so That's funny you bring one. that up. Alex already beat Izzy in kickboxing. Like, it's all well-known, right? Yeah. So if he beats him again, like, there's a little part of me, if I'm Alex Pierre and, and, and my team, right, if I'm like, like, guys, I already knocked him out. I came here to the UFC and, like, in his home court and his home turf and then fought him again and beat him. Like, I don't want to mess with that guy again. Like, there's almost – I could feel Alex saying that and saying, like, hey, maybe Izzy needs to fight one other person or two other people to get back. Israel and Asanya, like literally this early this week is already uh, on another social media uh, podcast kind of said like, hey, he definitely does want to do the light heavyweight again. He thinks one day to end up his career, he'll be a heavyweight, which is pretty yeah. scary to say. Um, so like, I don't know. Like, I just I, I don't know. Like, maybe I would s assume a rematch would be in the works, but you would think that the UFC in spring of 2023 wouldn't want to do Usman Edwards and Piera. Izzy back to back, like it's just too much of the same. So maybe, yeah. especially it's if Robert sure. Whitaker wins, he's a fan favorite. It's they the UFC knows this is the only shot of him being a champion again. If it's not Izzy, so maybe it's cool to kind of do Whitaker and Alex and Melbourne again, do that like in a really really big arena, and then yeah. maybe Izzy can fight someone else not for a championship. Who knows? I mean, that'd be wild. It, it that can, would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it would be interesting to see it play out like that. Um, yeah, it would make things. It's always nice to shake it up and not have the rematches like we see so much now. But it's like the, the champions just seem to get so dominant. Yeah. Or they, even if it is only like two two or three defenses, that it's like that's domination of a division right there. You know, so they kind of earn their rematch. But yeah, it's nice to cycle through more. And we all know, like to to become a champion, like what Izzy did. Like Izzy had Izzy fought Vittori on his way to the top. So yeah. to become like Charles Oliveira had to win six times, seven times. Leon Edwards had to go through the welterweight division to get the crack at it, and now right. he's the champ. Yeah, he beat so the top ten. Right, get there, right, yeah, so. exactly, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Woo. It was crazy. Um, so real quick, I was in Albuquerque, met Holly home for a quick second. Uh, it was awesome time. I was at Jackson Wing for a little bit too as well. And so, yeah, I did. I had, I said to her, I was like, you know, 
about Rousey, you know, I know it's so long ago in a way, but like, I would just love like your mindset going into it or, or did you know what, you know, kind of, and how confident were you? And like, she like looked at me, she's like, no, we, we knew we were going to win. Like we knew standing up, of course, if I could just defend one judo take from Rhonda, she like, we all knew our team knew, uh, our gym knew that uh, I was going to kickbox the crap out of her. I was like, like she just, her saying yeah. that out loud, like just, I got chills. I was like, Whoa, that's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Well, I believe it. I believe that confidence. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. It's wild. Well, very cool. Felicia, it's great to see you uh, back in Florida. So hopefully if we're here for a couple of weeks, I got to go to Orlando, the jungle. We got to do this again. There is a pay-per-view next week in Chimaev and Diaz. So maybe it's another installment at the jungle with uh, Felicia Spencer's Phenomenal Picks. Sounds good. Sounds thick. Okay. I'm going to time it right. You ready to punch the camera? Here we go. <laughs> All right. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs>